I'm Yiri, CEO and founder of Supernova, and in this video I will show you some new stuff that we have been working on recently, namely the ability to create themes and theme your tokens inside your documentation. Now this will only take me a few minutes to get to a point which you are seeing on the screen from basically nothing, so let's get started. So let's start with Figma where I have my design system. As you can see I have just the basics of a design system. I have some color palette that defines my base colors and I also have their semantic meanings, uh, some semantic palettes that I'm using throughout the application. I have colors and I also have typographies. Now this is the base of my design system, but I've also created a theme file, which basically has the same palette, but the semantic colors are a little bit different. So in this file, you can see white and purple, but if we go to the dark one, uh, my semantic colors are actually black and pink. Now let's get to Supernova, let's get all of this data uh, into Supernova and actually start documenting them. So the first thing that I will do, I will just click share, copy the link to this file, uh, go to Supernova and start importing. Now we have recently introduced something that we call data sources. You can basically just link to your Figma files and data sources have different purposes. So in here, I'll create a new data source, just pasting the link. I will keep it automatically updated. So any change you do to that file will automatically propagate to the documentation or to the automation pipelines that you can set in Supernova, as you will see at the end of this video. And what I will also do is enable import of the styles. So in this case, I will just import all the styles uh, from this file. I'm not interested in any components, assets, or anything else that I can have there. I'll click import. And now, as you will see, we have basically created a new data source, which is called uh, the team demo, uh, the default style, and it is being used in styles. Now, this will take only a moment, and after the successful import, we will have the tokens ready. As you can see, my tokens have imported. Uh, it says data source file imported successfully. So let's go to the content of my design system, which currently now contains the tokens that I have imported from Figma. And already you can see that I have quite a lot of data that are all coming from Figma. Right? So basically what I had in this file, we now have structured inside Supernova in the new uh, token manager that we have announced and that we are uh, showing today. As you can see, I have the semantic tokens here as well, and they are structured the same as you have them in Figma. But what about the theme? This is actually something that we are introducing today. And so what I can do now is I can create a new theme. Now I'll create a new theme and I will call it maybe a dark theme. And let's just uh, keep everything else simple. And for now, I will leave the data source as it is. So basically, don't do anything automatically. I'll confirm this. And now Supernova will create a new column, basically, that allows me to fill a other value of the token with the, for the dark team. So what I will do, uh, reorder this just so it makes sense. And now I can basically start adding values. I can say, well, maybe the primary active background should actually be for the dark mode something else, right? So I can tap into my library and maybe from the palette, I will choose, uh, say, the pink 1100. Now you can see that in this case, I basically have the default value of the token. But if I would be looking on this design system under the dark mode, it would actually give me a different value. And that's the entire magic. But when it becomes really powerful is if you actually automate this from Figma. So again, I can go back to the data sources and continue linking the data. I will just have to be a little smart about how I link them together with the teams. So I will go to the second file. I'll again share the link to this file and create a new data source. And in this case, I will select that I'm still interested in the styles, but I will also say that the data should not be applied to the default values of tokens, but rather to the theme values that uh, I would like to prefill. Now we will again click import, keep this automatically updated, and it will start importing. Now, as you can see, not only this is now applied to styles, but it is actually participating in the dark theme. So when this import finishes, it will actually have the data there. 
Now we can go back to uh, to the values and you can see that the column now instead of filling all of that uh, by hand like hundreds of tokens actually does have a dark mode. Now the palette is obviously the same for uh, both the default value and the dark mode but if we go to the semantic layer you will see that the values are actually different and they are the complete replica of what you can see in Figma. Now I could continue, I can add another theme, right? So if I would like to have a great scale theme or something even more wild, I could continue. You are not limited uh, by any number of choices that you have to make. What you can also do is to add metadata on top of your tokens. So if I, for example, would like to um, assign specific sets to my tokens just to differentiate like what tokens are um, important for components, what tokens are important for like a general usage. I can do that. I have defined uh, some basic token sets. So maybe I would like to add the active background and also maybe the background and color to the core set. Uh, I could continue doing that, applying different, uh, different options. I can also maybe uh, create a new property here uh, and say, well, I would like a specific names for my React properties. So I can just say uh, React name and it will be uh, type text. Um, I can confirm this and now all of my tokens do have a React name. And I could continue uh, say saying uh, it should be primary active background. You can of course do that using our automated pipeline so you don't have to fill those name uh, by hand. But if you have something specific or, or you want very different names that you cannot transform by some code, you can do it this way. So now we have uh, all the data prepared and the only thing that is left to do is to basically document this. Right? So let's go to the documentation part of Supernova and see how we can make it uh, so it gets to a point of showing this nice comparison uh, that I was showing at the beginning. Going back uh, to the docs, you will see that Supernova has a documentation editor uh, and inside the documentation editor I have created two pages. One where I would like to highlight all of my colors and then the other one where I would like to highlight the differences between the light and dark mode. Let's start with the colors. So let's just type uh, token to basically bring the options that we have to show the tokens inside the documentation. Specifically, I'm interested in listing all of my tokens. So I will use token group and uh, I'm interested in colors. I don't have to worry about the palettes, but I can, for example, highlight the semantic tokens that I have here. So selecting the semantic, you will see that immediately I have a list of all my semantic tokens grouped by those semantic categories that I have defined. Now this shows just the base value, uh, but this is actually um, something that I would like to do for this particular page. I, I don't want to show the theme here, I have a specific page. Now, I also have something that we have introduced recently, which is a variant. Uh, what you are seeing here is just the editor experience, but how it renders is basically defined using different kinds of templates. And you can provide those templates yourself, but we also have many templates by default. And I think for tokens, we have uh, some quite spectacular ones. So for example, let's render this as like a two grid column. Now I will ignore the theme for now and I will hit publish, which will basically generate the documentation and uh, create a visual representation of the data that you are seeing here. Now this takes just a moment. So let's go to the documentation. Let's view what was generated. As you can see, I have my colors and the themes, which we haven't yet done. Um, and in here, I've generated a very nice representation uh, of the data. As you can also see, uh, because I've set the metadata of the tokens here, they are actually showing up uh, for those that I haven't set, they will be empty. And you can configure this, uh, which is also something new uh, today. Uh, you can actually say, I would like to show the React name, but maybe the set I'm not interested in. And so if you republish the documentation, it will actually hide all of the data until maybe you are confident that this is something that you would like to show to your users. Right? So if we refresh, you can now see that 
the tokens show just the React names and uh, only where applicable. Now let's finish uh, with the documentation. So let's go to the teams and create the comparison view, which as I was showing you at the beginning. So going to the teams, let's do the same thing uh, again, uh, create a token group and create the colors. And in here, I again would like to spawn the semantic, uh, semantic view. This is basically the replica of what we have in the colors, but I can now use the new option to basically apply a theme on top of the existing data. Right? So as you can see in here, I can select the theme and uh, right now I don't have any theme applied, but I will select the dark mode. And if I do that, uh, you can see that right now I have not just one value, but actually two values comparing the base default one with the dark mode. So in here, uh, I have the changes that I have done in Figma. This is actually the semantic colors that I have imported from here and from here. But uh, some of the columns or some of the values of the column are actually the same because I haven't done any changes to them. So for both the light mode or the default value of my design system and the dark mode, they actually show the same value. Now again, because this has great many variants, I can select from some and not to make it the same as we have in colors, let's maybe uh, select the stack, which will allow us to render very nice, very visual representation of, uh, of the themes. Now, one thing to note, uh, there is also the option to disable that. Uh, if we disable the split view, we'll actually only render the themed tokens. So it is as if you would apply that theme on the tokens. But in my opinion, uh, showing the difference and really uh, hammering down the difference between different themes is actually very important. So you'll keep that uh, up. Again, I'll publish the documentation and now within like five minutes, we have basically created a page that contains all of my semantic colors and all of my themes applied uh, with the light and dark mode. So going to the documentation, if we now go to teams, you will see that we have created a comparison table uh, for the uh, for the tokens uh, for, for both light mode and dark mode. You can also see that if you name it dark, we will have a special icon for it. If you name it differently, there are other special icons. Uh, there is quite a lot uh, and very smart system that basically uh, recognizes what you would like to do and behaves accordingly. The last thing that I would like to show you is how the automatic updates work in regards to the data that we have just created. So not just the tokens, but also the documentation, how it all ties together. What I will do, I'll go to Figma and let's say that for the dark mode, for some reason, I actually don't like the active background. Right? So uh, someone will say, we'll change it in Figma. And I would like that change to have propagated everywhere where I have used this. So going to Figma uh, and going to my dark mode, I will select the primary background um, and go to the style definition and maybe just uh, for fun, I will pick some completely random color, right? Uh, please don't do that. But uh, I think for the purposes of showing what it does, uh, it's actually a good idea. So now we have changed the style definition and uh, maybe we can also rename it to ugly green. Uh, and now what I will do, I will simply publish uh, the changes to this team, right? So just one token has changed. Uh, the library was published and now Supernova over time will pick this change and automatically propagate it everywhere where you have used it. Now we can also force this change. So I will just click get all updates, which will basically ask Figma what has changed since the last time we have uh, checked for such changes and it will automatically uh, apply those changes everywhere where it needed. As you can see, the data source uh, actually updated automatically. And now uh, you can see that my color, which was originally uh, the pink one, actually changed to the green definition. You can also see that if we go to the documentation, 
uh, inside the colors, nothing changed, of course, because it was uh, specific to that theme. But if we go to the theme definition, uh, the color actually changed here as well. And if we now publish the documentation, the change was immediately deployed uh, to the documentation side as well. This is your decision when you uh, release those changes, but there was basically no work uh, needed or done from my side beyond just clicking that get all updates button. So going into themes, you can now see that we have the background changed. So this is what we had for you today. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this little preview of what themes in Supernova do. But it's by no means everything that we are actually releasing today. Uh, we are also announcing Figma tokens integration. So if you are using the Figma tokens plugin, uh, you are now able to synchronize your tokens uh, of various uh, shapes like colors, typographies, measures uh, into Supernova automatically. It works great with the teams and it also works great with the brands, which is something that we haven't shown uh, in this video, but there is another video uh, focusing on brands as well. With that, I hope that you liked what you have seen and I will see you in the next one.